Namaskaram to the August gathering. With respect to the Indian education system, um, one, what we are as of now. So we largely people who are seated in this auditorium are recipients of the current day Indian education system. So uh, the session says paradigm shift. So when I look at the Indian education system that is quite desirable where we look into the past. There are three quick parameters which I feel will matter a lot when infused into the current Indian education system. One is an integrated approach to understanding and uh, disseminating knowledge. For example, uh, in the due course of singing poetry, Arya Bhatta just says Chaturadhika Shatam Ashtagunam Dva Sashti Ayutascha 62,832 divided by 20,000 which is 3.14 which is the pi value. Use it in constructing an altar. So in the due course of speaking about Agnihotra, he just spells out pi value. Sthiragasa Samaradhya Vikatata Matamata Vedanta Deshika in the 13th century just in the course of describing the holy sandals of the Lord solves the Euler's problem just in a fluke. When Kaushalya has to send Rama on an exile for a 14 years to the forest, she says, use this ring made of Santana Kar Karani, which is a herb. So she talks botany there. When Hanuman has to bring four different herbs, though it's not the binomial nomenclature of calling it a chlorophytum borivilianum, four different herbs are mentioned with the names. So there's botany. And when the setu is being constructed, the saltwater crocodiles which are very specific to the Bay of Bengal are mentioned. So the point I'm trying to make is, as poetry flows, science and maths naturally flow. Today, Wordsworth and miles to go before I sleep is reserved for 12 to 1 session in the schools after lunch. And uh, Pythagoras theorem is mentioned for 9 to 10 because what gives you food is 9 to 10 and not 12 to 1 is what is largely believed. So people often ask me, after having undergone engineering at Pilani, how did you turn into a philosopher? I say, that's what made me a philosopher. So engineering is what makes a few philosophers. It may make a lot of them in the future too. So that's one. That's the integrated approach. Second, very quickly, is the logical approach. When Hanuman hasn't seen Sita, he hasn't seen a profile pic. Her profile is locked. He hasn't seen how she looks. He goes to uh, uh, Lanka and spots her. That time... Uh, Valmiki says, Tarkaya masa siteti. Through logical reasoning, he got to know this is Sita. A lot of things are deployed where her missing pallu and her sari matches, the border matches, everything, all of that happens. So, logical reasoning, which is Tarka Shastram, was integral to the Indian education system that was desired in the past. So, if we have to infuse that into the current day, it will be a lot more beneficial. And the last part, um, with respect to the Indian education system that is desirable, that should undergo a paradigm shift is the Guru Sishya relationship. So, whenever we look into the scriptures of the past of this land, we speak of Vasishtha Rama, Vishwamitra Rama, Valmiki and Lavakusha, Drona and Arjuna, Arjuna and Krishna, Sandipani and Krishna. So, there is always a beautiful relationship, a symbiotic relationship, an organic relationship that has been existed and that has been revered in the past. So these are the three approaches which I feel to your question of the Indian education system that is desirable and to the topic which says paradigm shift. Great. Now, um, you know, he has mentioned the Ramayana, the, the, the Puranas, if I'm not mistaken. Do you think you would classify them as history or myth? He, what's your prescription for the leftifying Indian education and I don't give me the Sanskrit things because I don't understand it. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, how, what is your prescription to de-leftify de Indian education? Uh, the word is de? I'm saying de-leftify, I can't think oh. of a better word. Okay, so to de-leftify, the answer is not to rightify it, but to present one side of the knowledge system in that we have bequeathed which has never been presented in the past. That's what he was telling. So it's very, very important that we present both sides. Very good. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people are, at least in the higher education system, people are judicious enough to take the essence, the quintessence of it and decide for themselves. So the right way to de-leftify is to present knowledge as is, which, which is too theoretical and too perfect to look at. 
there may be some amount of rightifying also but i feel that rightifying should be given a chance that leftifying has happened for decades absolutely absolutely <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely.